So this pattern gets even a bit more confusing as we get to what she considers the front legs because the pattern does not look or the picture does not look like there are front legs. So I got a little confused there, but there are front legs and what they do is they stiffen up the wings. So we're gonna go ahead and start with another slip knot on that front leg. And we're gonna go ahead and chain 13. Now if you chain a little bit looser here, it will be easier to do the next step. We're gonna skip the chain that's next to the hook and we're gonna slip stitch all the way back for 12. Okay, once we're back to the end, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Then we're going to single crochet to the other end for 12. It's hard to single crochet and slip stitches. So again, be patient with yourself. Use your fingernail to try to push your yarn over your hook to grab that loop. We're gonna chain one and turn our work. When you get the work turned, this gets even trickier. You're going to slip stitch between the back loop of each single crochet and the loops along the bottom. So the back loop here and the loops here to, basically you're making a tube and you're closing this up. Make sure that I'm on camera for this. So you're gonna slip stitch here and you're gonna slide down to the bottom and come through there. And then you're just going to slip stitch right back up through that top loop. So again, you grab the back loop of the top turn your work sort of slightly, grab the bottom stitches. You really can't hold tension on this very easily. And then you're just gonna slip stitch up through the first one that was on your loop. So you're gonna grab that top one, come down, grab the bottom, and slip stitch.
doesn't look very pretty, but what it's doing is reinforcing the strength of this length of yarn, and that's going to reinforce the strength of the wing. Just do the best you can. Basically, you're reinforcing the strength of the wing. Try to get one last one in if you can right at the end, because then after this, we're gonna start making the claw. All right, can you see how tight that weave is? Try to put my camera out just a little bit more. Now, we are going to chain three. We're gonna skip the chain that's nearest to the hook. and slip stitch in the next two. Again, it's really tricky to work with. I don't want to cut out the difficult parts because I have a feeling you guys will have just as much trouble as I am. So I want to show you that it is not easy to do. We're going to do that again. That's one claw. Now we're going to chain three. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to slip stitch back in the second chain from the hook and then slip stitch into the next one. And then after that, we're gonna finish it off. So leave a good tail. We can always weave our tails in, remember. And just pull it through. So we have two claws. right here and then we're going to come back and take the second wing that we did and with the pointy parts down with the pointed edges down we're going to lay, lay the narrow end away from where we want the claws. 
So I know we have a lot of ends here, and if you want to take some of your ends and weave them in, now would probably be a good time to do that. Get them out of your way. I'm just going to weave it back in and kind of strengthen the top of my wing a little bit because this is where we're going to sew the leg on. Since I have to get rid of this length of yarn anyway, I might as well weave it back along the top. It doesn't have to go a long ways. You're just getting rid of some of this tail. Cut it off. There we go. Get that one out of our way. Now, Take a length of your claw. This claw actually turned out better than my first one that I did. And you might find the same thing happens with you. Your second one might turn out a little better. But again, remember, your wings are on opposite sides of the body, so it's going to be just fine. Unless you're a perfectionist, and honestly, if you're a perfectionist, this project would be super frustrating. So we're just going to take and sew it carefully along the top of our wing. You can see by the pictures you want to pull those claws down to the tip of the wing and you'll do this just by taking the tail and weaving it through. Once it's positioned the way you like, go ahead and continue sewing that leg onto the top of the wing. These pointed or curved crochet needles are really helpful with this project. And I will have a link in the description below if you want to order those. I have sewing needles that have a big eye on them, but for this project, I think probably I would stab myself a lot. And I don't think it would be as effective for sewing this on. Again, you're just moving down the leg and stitching it onto your wing top with the tail of the thread that you used or the tail of the yarn that you used earlier to start this entire project. And when I say project, I mean the front leg. So I've pretty much used up the tail that I had, and I'm just going to go ahead and make some tie-off stitches because I don't want that leg to come off of the wing. So I'm just going to kind of move into the body of the wing a little bit, do a couple of tie-off stitches. Just as I would if I were sewing. Then once it's as tight as I like, I'm going to go ahead and weave through the wing to hide the tail, the very tail, and cut it off. Or the very end of the tail and cut it off. 
move that out of our way. Now you can see that we've got our claws up here, but we still have another tail to deal with. So I'm going to take the tail. And go ahead and stitch it down. Again, all of this just secures that leg to the wing. So however you want to do that to strengthen that wing up. You could even bring it down if you want and, and work it along this part if you wanted. That's what I did with my first wing, but this one I decided I'll just weave it through here because I think my wing is pretty sturdy on this one. You'll probably find the same that you'll do better with your second one than you did your first. And if you don't like your first, just go ahead and do a third one. Take your best two. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and choose where you want the wing on your Norbert. And again, we're not going to be on the same precise body round that she says in the book because I did adapt the body a bit. I didn't like the way it was turning out on hers. Just make sure that your claw, the claw part of your wing is up. So we're going to start down here at the bottom. I'm going to match it to where I put my other wing and I'm just going to start stitching. And my goal is to just attach this wing as securely as I can to the body. because I like for things to be attached really well, I'm going to go back down and sew the wing even tighter to the body. We just don't want that wing to come off at all, especially if you're giving this to a child then and they want to pull or play or throw it. It should hold pretty sturdy if you do a double or triple stitch in there. Pretty happy with how secure this is feeling. So after this last stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple tie-off stitches and hide the tail. Since everything's the same color, you're not going to notice your tie-off stitches. And then just bury it deep in the body. Pull it tight and clip it off. Okay, now we have Norbert's wings in place. You can see that my claws on this one are definitely better than the claws on this one. I'll do a kind of a, a wing spread here. My claws turned out better on my second one than my first one. But again, they're on opposite sides of the body and you're just not going to notice 